Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Mumbles, Croeso Ir Mumbles. Night and day, winter and summer, good times and bad, there's been one thing in Mumbles that has lit up our lives since it was first opened in 1794. Mumbles Lighthouse has been saving lives for more than 200 years, and we hope will continue to do so long into the future. It is an instantly recognisable focal point at the end of Dylan Thomas's splendid curving shore, a beacon to travellers far and wide, whether they're sailing up the Bristol Channel or passing Porth Call on the M4. For those of us born and raised in its shadow, it's a comforting presence that watches over us when we are here and shows us the way home when we're returning. Hopefully this film will capture some of that affection. If you like, this is Lighthouse Theatre's love letter to the Mumbles Lighthouse. On the far end of Swansea Bay are two small islands. One local legend has it that they were named Mamel, or Breasts, by the Normans, from which came the name of the area, Mumbles. These two rocks stand sentinel against the dangers beneath, the treacherous cherry stone rocks and the sandbanks of the Mixon Shoals. In 1791, as Swansea entered the industrial trading world, a harbour trust was set up to warn ships from these hazards that were claiming many lives. By 1794, a lighthouse was constructed under the direction of William Jennigan, and soon they added a house for the person to live in who shall keep the lights. Over the years, that person was almost always called Ace or Cottle or Williams, all names well known to residents of Mumbles even today. It has been a home, a fortress and a tourist destination. But above all, it is a saver of lives. I think for anyone growing up in Mumbles, the lighthouse really is a symbol of home. And for us, when you hear the words from the coxswain, take me home to Mumbles, and the first beat of the lighthouse, you know that first pint's not too far. In many ways, um, it's almost the trickiest part by there, getting the boat back onto the slip. But you know you're, you're almost home. And um, whether you're travelling back from home from London or away, the lighthouse is always a symbol. People often say, popsy pin, microwave, or ribbly wobbly starfish, or he rife. And I think for anyone, anyone from Mumbles, it means lighthouse. Oh, definitely, I remember going out there with my um, bamper, my gramps, and showing me the biggest crab ever. And that's part of the reasons I want to join the lifeboat. Any kid growing up in Mumbles wants to be part of the crew. And the first time I went out there on the cherry stones, was on Nasty Bear Rapids further be the other side. I remember screaming as the boat, the little, little inflatable rubber duck, hit the air. It really is quite, quite something when the lighthouse hits you, you're as big and small as anyone who's gone before there. As you walk down the steps to the sand, you pass a blue plaque to two of the many characters who make up the chequered history of this beautiful monument. Jesse Ace and Margaret Wright are the famous women of Mumble's Head, who saved the lives of lifeboatmen and German sailors when the Prussian ship, the Prince Adalbert, founded in the bay on the 27th of January, 1883. Crossing the sands, you can see the broken remains of a causeway built in the 1940s to supply soldiers stationed here during the Second World War. In the 1970s, it was blown up because it was affecting the tides in Swansea Bay. A landing stage that would not be out of place in an Agatha Christie or Enid Blyton story pokes out into the sea and long worn steps lead up past the lighthouse keeper's cottage to the lighthouse itself. As children, we liked nothing more than an afternoon playing in Bob's cave. Beneath the lighthouse and accessible only when the tide is out is the mysterious and enticing Bob's cave. Was it named after Bob, the brave lifeboatman who sheltered here when his lifeboat was wrecked during a rescue attempt? Or the bold buccaneer Bob, who smuggled his goods from here, from wrecked ships? Who knows? Who lets the truth get in the way of a good story, eh? <laughs> Whatever the reason, we had great fun pretending. Beneath the tower, there's a circular stone foundation. It is in fact a fort built in the 1860s to deter a French invasion, 
one of many forts built by the then Prime Minister, Viscount Palmerston. The invasion never came, and the forts cost hundreds of thousands of pounds. They became known as Palmerston's Follies. The military connection proved important again in the Second World War. The two platforms south of the lighthouse were home to two guns, and 15 members of the Royal Artillery were employed to fire them. When the threat of invasion diminished, they were taken over by the Home Guard. Don't panic, Captain Mannering! In 1906, the lighthouse keeper was called Jasper Williams. He oversaw the introduction of a new mechanical foghorn. To this day, when the foghorn is heard piercing the winter nights, older Mumble's residents in the pubs will say, there's Jasper's baby crying again. Oh, it's, it's in the thing, actually, of course, these days, uh, the, the, the trick about lighthouses is a spotting the blessed things. There are many navigation lights. There are so many lights in, in, in our lives. Um, to stop a spot, a harbour marker or something like that, is the background of, say, Cardiff Bay or Swansea Bay. It's a real job. You've got to look pretty hard and say, is it? yes, it's there. And you've really got to concentrate. But, of course, back in the uh, late uh, 1790s, uh, um, there would have been no street lamps, but what you would have had, of course, would have been the copper works. So I dare say um, South Wales, with all the steel works and copper works and hearths and furnaces, what have you, would have looked like Dante's Inferno, and you'd have seen that from maybe 50 miles away. So if you like, you almost have this sort of massive, glowing mass of Swansea and Swansea Valley drawing you in like a moth. And if you're heading straight for it, well, bad news, because you hit the mix and shoal, or even worse, you actually hit Mumbles Rocks, you know, the actual headland, uh, which would not be good news, having made it all the way around the world. So, hence the lighthouse. Keep that way, boys. Keep, keep to your right. Like the village of Mumbles itself, Mumbles Lighthouse has developed with the times. At the start of the 20th century, the keepers no longer needed to live permanently on the island. In the 1920s, the running of the lighthouse was taken over by the Great Western Railway Company as they purchased the Swansea Harbour Trust. The last lighthouse keeper, Charlie Cottle, left the island totally in the 1930s. But we'll let Jessie and Margaret have the final word. Following the rescue attempt in 1883, Clement Scott wrote a poem in praise of these two heroines of the lighthouse. It was called The Women of Mumble's Head. So, just follow me brave to the shingle and we'll drag him safe to land. Wait for the next wave, darling, only a minute more, and I'll have him safe in my arms, dear. We'll drag him safe to shore. Up to their arms in the water, fighting it breast to breast, they caught and saved a brother alive. God bless us, you know the rest. Well, many a heart beat stronger, and many a tear was shed, and many a glass was tossed right off to the women of Mumble's head. <laughs>